Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I want to talk about something that I think we just need to draw attention to because it comes up so much of the time. Why do so many people have the wrong idea about what they're supposed to eat? If our ideas about diet are such great ideas, why aren't they mainstream? In fact, it just came up in a class that I taught a day or so ago. And so I'll, I'll put in the caveat at the beginning of this message and also at the very end and say that I work with a lot of excellent dietitians who have the right idea and they've moved away from traditional dietetics. But if you wanna know why things are so messed up, this story will tell you this. A reporter recently posted an article describing her experience as an attendee at the California Dietetic Association's annual meeting. The event was largely sponsored by food companies like McDonald's and the reporter, Kara Butler, talked about how she walked around the convention floor and she saw her sheets passing out chocolates and flavored milk samples and um, there were all kinds of giveaways. For example, Butter Buds gave out fake butter crystals and there was a pamphlet on how to lose weight while eating steak from the California Beef Council, microwave brownies from Amy's Naturals and a buffet that included foods from Sizzler and Boston Marathon and all kinds of chains. Additionally, all of the continuing education sessions, if you could even call them that, and I'll come back to that in a second, were sponsored by food companies also. They were uh, companies like Coca-Cola, Yum Brands, Kraft, and the content of these sessions definitely reflected the preference of the uh, sponsors. I mean, that's why they do this, all right? So, for example, the Wheat Council sponsored a presentation about how gluten intolerance was a fad, not a real medical issue. Other sessions included lectures on how genetically modified organisms are actually good for the environment and environmentally sustainable. And I mean, the list goes on, it just makes you crazy. But a panel sponsored by the Corn Refiners Association lamented that some schools were no longer serving chocolate milk. And one panelist said that when schools won't allow kids to eat candy on Valentine's Day, they miss opportunities to, uh, to teach kids about moderation. Because gosh, I so remember being taught about moderation in school when I was scarfing down Hershey's Kisses on Valentine's Day, right? And they're ridiculous. So the reporter writes that uh, she asked the, one of the conference organizers about conflicts of interest and was just sure that the sponsors didn't have anything to do with the content of the panel discussions. Um, according to Pat Smith, who was a spokesperson, she says, we like to think that our dietitians have a thought process and that we're presenting them with what is out there. They then need to make their own decisions on what they've listened to and apply that to their client base. When she was asked about how one can make an intelligent decision when only hearing one point of view, Smith told the reporter that she didn't know that the panel on corn syrup was comprised of only representatives from industry, but she did confirm that it was paid for by the corn refiners. So, um, I mean, why don't they know this and why isn't their attention paid to this? If the real purpose of this meeting is to educate dietitians, you'd think somebody would be, the, would be controlling this and, and taking a look at the programming. Evidence shows, though, that contrary to the statements that are made, industry sponsorships pay off. Now, you might remember a while ago, the mayor of New York was trying to limit the size of sodas that could be sold in New York. And I was against that idea because I just don't like government interference. But, the new, uh, but the, when the supersized soft drink ban was proposed, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics was right there against it. And of course, one of the reasons is they're sponsored by groups like Coke and Pepsi and that sort of thing. Uh, Butler, the reporter, says that she initially was denied uh, press credentials for the conference. She was told that the California Dietetic Association has its own journalists cover the event. Boy, that's a great idea. This is becoming a trend in terms of trying to keep the proceedings secret. Attendees at the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics conference last year were stopped when they tried to take pictures of the convention floor and all of the food companies and their wares. If these organizations insist that there's nothing wrong, then why would there be so much secrecy associated with this. Now to be fair, dietitians are not the only group that are influenced by industry. In fact, I think they all are. Butler reports that the School Nutrition Association's conference in 2013 was sponsored by Pepsi, Domino's, and Sara Lee. This illustrious group asked Congress to retract the rule requiring that students eat fruits and vegetables and to relax rules concerning sodium and whole grains that are also supposed to be paid attention to in the diet. 
Now, fortunately, there are some dietitians that are clearly against a lot of these practices. Uh, Butler quotes Andy Bellotti, and I actually did a story on this guy and another dietitian who started a group that, um, can't remember the name of it, but it's basically about dietitians and integrity. And he stated to uh, the reporter, Butler, his surprise and shock when he found out, quote, I could get continuing education credits for literally sitting in a room and listening to Frito-Lay tell me that sun chips are a good way to meet my fiber needs. I thought, no wonder Americans are overweight and diabetic. The gatekeepers for our information about food are getting their information from junk food companies. Vladi is the founder of Dietitians for Professional Integrity, and this group is demanding that a lot of these practices stop, and they actually had a petition on change.org that got quite a bit of attention. Bilotti posted pictures that he had taken at the a and conference, and then the next year they were uh, watching out for him. He was told he was not allowed to take pictures. Sadly, most dietitians aren't as enlightened as Bilotti, and, and I don't think it's necessarily their fault. I wish that a lot of health professionals would think more for themselves, but they are somewhat victims of their training. But this comment just blew me away. Butler reports that most of the dietitians that she spoke to at this California conference had no idea that the sessions that they went to were sponsored by food companies, and one of them said, quote, I hope they're telling us the real science. So you're sitting there listening to the Corn Refiners Association and McDonald's and these various food companies tell you their point of view, and you hope they're telling you the real science. I, I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. In any case, I'll repeat the caveat that there are some marvelous dietitians out there, some of whom are friends and colleagues of mine who have learned better, but this organization has got to clean up its act. And I, would, I think that dietitians who understand need to put more pressure on the uh, A&D to clean up its act because the perception of the public is that this is a group to be trusted about diet and health. And I would like to be able to trust the group about diet and health. Believe me, I would find something else to do with my time besides rant and rave about these issues if we could clean it up. So um, you know, go dietitians, those of you who are in the right camp, keep putting pressure on these people. And if we have to embarrass them into changing their ways, so be it. But this, all of this to say, this is why people in this country still don't understand the right diet for humans and why our diet, the one we recommend here at the Wellness Forum, is not um, what everybody is taught should be the best diet for humans. Okay, that's all for today. All for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will speak with you again next week.